Listen, I wanted to talk to y'all a little bit more about soul ties. So, listen, ungodly soul ties. So, soul ties with somebody that is not from God. Amen. I want to read y'all a little bit from Judges chapter 14 and Judges chapter 16. And I'm going to break a little bit down for y'all. I'm not going to break down every part of the of, of the chapters, but listen, I'm going to break this down for y'all so y'all can get a clear vision. A lot of us need this revelation. A lot of you watching this right now, you need this revelation. All right, this is going to open your eyes. Listen, in Judges chapter 14, it talks about somebody, this dude named Samson. He was a man of God. He was a powerful, he was a strong man, but he struggled with self-control and he struggled with lust and he struggled with anger. So listen, it says, I have seen a Philistine woman in Timnah. Now get her for me as my wife. His father and mother replied, isn't there an acceptable woman among your, your relatives or among all your people? Must you go to the uncircumcised Philistines to get a wife? But Samson said to his father, get her for me. She's the right one for me. His parents did not know that it was from the Lord who was seeking an occasion to confront the Philistines. For at that time, they were ruling over Israel. So now listen, Samson, right? He saw this Philistine woman that was outside of his people. All right, and his parents didn't understand that. The Philistines had rule over Israel, but see, understand something. God can take our mistakes and he can take our bad decisions and he can flip the script and he can use them for his good. And that's exactly what he did. Okay, so he took this decision and he was going to use Samson, this strong, powerful man, to deliver the Israelites out of the hands of the Philistines. But we got to be careful, right? Because when we make these bad decisions, yes, God can flip the script and he can use them for our good and he can use them for his purpose. But it's our job to learn our lesson from our last mistakes. So if we continue to be consumed by this sin, ah, then we can't expect anything better than happened last time. Amen. The same kind of sin that destroyed us before. Listen, God might let it slide. We have his grace. We have his mercy. But we got to understand we can't continue to be consumed by that sin. We can't continue to make those same bad decisions. Amen. So eventually at the end of the chapter, it says, Then the Spirit of the Lord came fully upon him. He went down to Ashkelon, struck down 30 of their men, stripped them of everything, and gave their clothes to those who had explained the riddle. Burning with anger, he returned to his father's home, and Samson's wife was given to one of his companions who attended him at the feast. So eventually, long story short, he killed 30 of the Philistines. He destroyed them. He slaughtered him. Slaughtered them. This relationship did not work out. Okay, long story short. So listen, I want to skip to Judges chapter 16. Samson did it again. He fell into his lustful ways once again. He met a woman named Delilah. She was a prostitute. Now Samson again thought this woman looked good. He fell in love with this woman. Now check this out, but you got to understand this woman was not from God. This woman was working with the enemy. She was one of the Philistines. Now, listen, the rulers of the Philistines went to her and said, see if you can lure him into showing you the secret of his great strength and how we can overpower him so we may tie him up and subdue him. Now, listen, you got to be careful. This is one of the enemy's biggest tactics is to get us to feed into our lustful ways. Oh, this woman look good. This person look good right here. So I'm gonna fall in love with them. I'm gonna have sex with them. And then people will say, oh, you can't help who you fall in love with. Listen, you got to be smarter than that. You don't know if that person is a witch. You don't know who that person is working for. You don't know what kind of demons are operating behind that person. And if that person is not from God, see, the enemy wants you to get wants to get you to open that door, creating an ungodly soul tie with a person that is not of God so that he can get you out of agreement with God and get you into agreement with him. Amen. Y'all hear me or y'all ain't hearing me. So listen. So Delilah said to Samson, tell me the secret of your great strength and how you can be tied up and subdued. Samson answered her, if anyone ties me with seven fresh bowstrings that have not been dried, I'll come. I'll become as weak as any other man. Then the rulers of the Philistines brought her seven fresh bowstrings that had not been dried up and she tied him with them. With the men hidden in the room, she called to him, Samson, the Philistines are upon you. But he snapped the bowstrings as easily as a piece of string snaps when it comes to close to close uh, to a, uh, when it comes close to a flame. So the secret of his strength was not discovered. So listen, then Delilah said to Samson, you have made a fool of me. You lied to me. Come now. Tell me how you can be tied. So over and over again, you will see through this whole chapter, they couldn't get Samson. He was powerful. He was strong because God was with him. Amen. But Delilah kept on asking, kept on asking him, kept on trying to seduce him, kept on trying to trick him, manipulate him into revealing his strength and his power because the enemy knew if he could use this woman to manipulate this man, to seduce this man, to lure him and trick him into revealing 
how he gets his strength and his power, then that enemy can overpower him. Then that enemy can keep a hindrance on him and put him outside of God's will. Now, eventually, after time and time again, she asked him and asked him. She asked him once again. Then she called to Samson. Samson, the Philistines are upon you. He woke up from his sleep and thought, I'll go out as before and shake myself free. But he did not know that the Lord had left him. So you got to understand, it doesn't happen right away. But when we create a soul tie with somebody that is not from God, what happens over time? Eventually, we are in agreement with the lie. We are in agreement with the enemy. We reveal too much. Amen. And now when we're in agreement with the lie and we're in agreement with the enemy, that puts us outside of God's will. So that breaks our agreement and our covenant with God. Therefore, eventually over time, not only do we lose the power and the strength that the Lord has put in us and the Lord departs from us. But what happens next? Then the Philistines seized him, gouged out his eyes and took him down to Gaza. Amen. So listen, when we give into our lustful ways, when we give into sexual perversion, we create ungodly soul ties with people. And this is how the enemy keeps chains on us and keeps us bound. So not only did eventually the Lord depart from him, eventually he left. Eventually he lost his strength and his power. But over time, they gouged out his eyes, meaning the enemy was able to blind him, distort his vision. So when you are in a toxic relationship, or when you have ungodly soul ties, you're in agreement with the enemy. So over time, not only do you lose your power and your strength, but you lose sight. If the enemy can distort your vision, then you're not going to be able to step into the new realms and dimensions that God wants you to enter into. Amen. If the enemy can distort your vision, you're not going to be able to follow the path that God has you on. You're not going to be able to see where God is trying to take you. If the enemy can distort your vision, you're not going to be able to know where to look for that truth. Come on, somebody. Listen, I know a lot of you watching this right now have gone through this or you are still going through this. This is one of the biggest ways, especially the enemy. Um, this is one of the biggest ways that he keeps especially young men and women under curses. Young men and women under spells, under jinxes, because we we so easily feed into our sexual perversion, into our lustful ways, and we open that door. So if we got ungodly soul ties with this person or that person, or if we end up in a relationship with somebody that is not from God, and the enemy is operating behind that person, now we are in agreement. So over time, we lose any power, we lose any strength, and over time, because we've had this ungodly soul tie for so long, it distorts our vision, it clouds our minds. Therefore, putting us outside of God's will for our life. Amen. Listen, I know y'all needed this information. This is a huge deal because this is something that majority, I'd say 90% of people go through this or are still going through this. This is how the enemy keeps you bound. This is how the enemy keeps you distracted, keeps your mind and your vision clouded. This is how he keeps you in chains and keeps you keeps a hindrance on a destiny God has ordained for you. I hope this could bless somebody. I love y'all. Let's get it.